thank you so much, Carlos. And thank you so much, everyone, for coming here. This is so awesome to see such a wonderful group of Angular developers right here in Zurich. Both Alan and myself are actually based in Zurich and have started working on the team uh, this year, although Angular, uh, Alan, Angular. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been working on the team for the last four to five years, but based in Zurich only last year. And just a brief introduction, uh, we are missing our uh, wonderful counterpart, Joey, who is still picking up guests. Yep. Uh, but Alan, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Alan, Ajus. Um, I work mostly on the Angular CLI tool team. And previously I was based in Malta, now I'm based in Zurich. And it's super pleased to be here and excited. Awesome, and I'm, I'm Simona Cotin. I've been living in Zurich since uh, two years ago, uh, previously working for Microsoft and have joined the Angular team in July last year. I'm an engineering manager uh, focusing on tooling and on the core framework. So we're really, really excited to share with you all a lot of the work that we've done in the past few years or the past year. And then we're also looking forward to sharing some of the things that are top of mind for our team. Now, given that both of us are based in Zurich, hopefully we're gonna be able to engage with all of you more often through this meetup. And I, I do wanna uh, kind of share or thank, say a huge thank you to the organizers for putting this event together um, and also for being here for nine years. That is so impressive. Uh, so a huge round of applause for them as well. Awesome, so today we're gonna talk a bit about the developer experience and then Joey is go going to present a bit more on um, how we actually manage the open source project and he's, I'm sure he has some really good jokes into the presentation, <laughs> so keep all of your laughs for, <laughs> for <him>. Joey's presentation. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's start with a story, a good story. Uh, it's about the American Air Force back in the 1950s uh, when pi pilots were having trouble controlling their aircrafts and incidents were on the rise. And they couldn't understand why, what was going on. They looked at the skills, they looked at the tech, and nothing was really coming up until they looked at the cockpit. And what was interesting about the cockpit was that it was created for the average person. But who here is, and who is really the average person? What they discovered is that in trying to fit the average person, it didn't actually fit anyone. And once they made that discovery, they ended up redesigning the controls of the cockpit to be adjustable so that they can meet the unique needs of each of the pilots. And that really laid the foundation of expanding the Air Force to women and building a more diverse and inclusive workforce as well beyond making it more adjustable for everyone else that was already working. So you might ask yourselves, like, how does that ap apply to Angular? This is an interesting story, but why is that even relevant? Well, we all know that Angular is an opinionated framework, and we know that that's one of our core strengths. But we also know that each of you, like one of the like each of the pilots, has a different set of problems that they need to solve, a different set of tools that you love using, um, and a different set of customer needs that you need to address, right? Each of us has different types of problems, so we might have different needs. And just as the Air Force made those controls flexible and adjustable, in the same way, we're building into the framework the knobs so that each of you can use the framework in a way that it exactly fits your needs. So we want to meet developers where they are. And one way in which we're doing that is through listening. How many of you here know about the annual Angular Developer Survey? Awesome. All of you that raised your hands, thank you so much for just being aware of that. Uh, I bet you're also the folks that very often go to the documentation page of uh, in the angular.io website. For those of you that maybe you not be, might not be aware of the developer survey or you haven't filled the previous one, uh, there's an opportunity, as Joey would call it, <laughs> to fill in the new survey to give us um, your input, to share feedback, uh, to talk about what are some of the things that you really care about. If you go to the angular.io 
website, you will see a link to the survey at the top of the page. We highly, highly encourage you to fill in that survey. Um, it really helps us shape the roadmap based on what's most important to you. Um, if you have one homework or one task to do out of this meetup, this is probably one of the most important one other than also going to the um, documentation. So looking at the data, as I mentioned, this actually fits into uh, our team's roadmap. And looking at some of the uh, responses from 2021, one of the things that we noticed is that this is probably one of the largest surveys out there for front-end tools, uh, with more than 20,000 people having gone through the survey. Uh, so we take it very seriously and influences our roadmap. Um, and looking at the data, we see that you are really happy with the productivity that Angular gives you. Uh, and you also love keeping up to date with Angular. That's something that the framework helps you uh, with. And it's, it shows that that's one of the things you uh, care about the most. But we also notice that there's opportunities for improvement um, over with debugging and profiling being one of them. So over the past few months, the Angular team has collaborated with the Chrome DevTools team to launch improvements to the debugging experience directly in DevTools. How many of you are familiar with this work? Okay, awesome, I see some hands, that's, that's wonderful. So some of you have watched the uh, ng, ng-conf keynote as well. Uh, so I'm gonna just breeze through it. Basically, uh, the core of the work that we did here was to make sure that as you are using the DevTools uh, debugging uh, and profiling uh, functionality, you actually get to see some of your source code as opposed to code that belongs to the framework or any other third party library. So you can see here in the screenshot, I'm searching for my component and I'm actually getting like framework code or um, any third party library code. And really what I want is to access my app component. And this is what we've been able to build in collaboration with the Chrome team. And the best part is that this is not only available for Angular, it's actually something that any other framework in the web ecosystem can benefit uh, from by um, implementing support for X Google Ignore list, um, and then any other developer will be able to benefit from this. Um, so here's another example where um, previously stack traces would be um, having all sorts of relevant ir or irrelevant um, calls. Um, Zone.js is probably one that you're most familiar with. Um, and after these recent changes, you're gonna be able to see these um, stack traces for your errors in the context of the code that you're writing. Are you, have you already experienced this? This is available in Angular 15 and one of the latest versions of uh, Chrome as well. So make sure to update. <laughs> uh, same is true for call stacks. Another feedback that we heard was that sometimes the error messages aren't very clear. Based off of the laughs, I <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna ask who here hasn't seen this error? Hasn't seen this error? Okay, zero hands up. Clearly, you're also familiar with this page, uh, but what I want to highlight here is that the Angular team really spends significant time kind of thinking through how do we surface and how do we explain some of these more common errors um, in a way that's helpful for developers. So we aggregated Google search results, we uh, went on Stack, Stack Overflow to really make sure that we cover the universe of com uh, common errors. We added error codes, we created videos, we created guides so that you all have this experience of better understanding the errors that the framework um, is producing. All right, going back to the survey, another clear area of improvement is testing, right here at the bottom. And Alan is gonna tell us more about this. Yeah, so um, Angular 12, we have added support for popular web testing frameworks, uh, Cypress, Nightwatch, and WebDriver.io. Playwright also has a migration guide. Uh, so currently, in projects running NG, we will walk developers through uh, choosing one of the integrated frameworks. Uh, these tools support custom schematics and builders, which automatically update uh, your project configuration and scaffold, scaffold it to integrate your application. Um, in version 14, or in version 14, based on a community RFC, 
uh, we decided to deprecate Protractor uh, while working with the community uh, to find a long-term solution option uh, for active projects that wish to continue uh, Protractor beyond its end of life. Uh, we'll be partnered with an independent team at Hero Devs uh, to provide long-term support. And I, I'm just curious, who here is familiar with the RFC process? Okay, I see a few hands, probably 10. I want to make sure that this, like you're aware that we have this request for comments process that we're running on GitHub in the Angular project, in the Angular CLI project. Whenever we're making significant changes to the platform, we want to make sure that we get all of your input. Uh, so that's a good place to maybe subscribe, make sure that you keep an eye on, because obviously as we're going into this new year, we're planning a lot of exciting work, and we wanna make sure that we get all of your input um, on some of the features and the APIs that we're planning for. So what we do with testing is an example of RFC that we ran with end-to-end -end testing. Uh, what, were we, what are our plans and the APIs for standalone is another example where we ran an RFC and we had very active conversations there. So highly encourage you to go on GitHub, check out the, the Angular repository and keep an eye on the RFC and GitHub discussions. That's where we publish them so that you can be the first ones to say, hey, I love this API or maybe this thing doesn't work for my use case. Can you help improve? Um, so, uh, C3 is only part of the story. Uh, this year we'll be focusing on investigating challenging with unit testing uh, and improving development experience. Uh, so please send us feedback and stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the goodies. <laughs> I hear that you are all excited um, about native tooling and faster build times, uh, both in your development and builds. Uh, currently, the default Angular builder uses Webpack under the hood. The bundler uh, then uses ES build to code optimizations and function aligning, and then cursor to do further code uh, compression. And while this is performant uh, with the recent evolution of build tools like ES build, uh, we think that can be better. Uh, in version 14, we introduced an experimental ES Build-based builder for ng-build, uh, which generates pure ESM output. And in version 15, we did support for much mode for better for better development workflow. Uh, as you can see here on the left hand side, I'm running an ng build in a project using current default Rocket based builder. And on the right hand side, I've configured a project to use as build. Uh, you can see that the first project takes just point one second, uh, while the ES build based builder takes three point six. Uh, this is consistent with our findings that ES build will have a fifty seven percent faster code builds. Uh, you can try this today in your project by editing the uh, Angular configuration and replacing the build Angular browser with build Angular browser ES build. Uh, this feature is still experimental at the moment, so please give it a try and share your feedback with us. Shifting gears a bit, uh, another strong team that we want to talk about is reducing the learning curve for Angular. One way to do this is by reducing the number of concepts that developers need to learn early in their journey. In version 15, we removed a total of six configuration files in newly generated application projects. Uh, as you can see here on the left, we have a uh, project that we created in version 14. And on the other side, we have a newly created project in version 15. Uh, the structure is more simple and less intimidating for new users. Uh, for users requiring to fine tune their project in 15.1 we introduce two additional commands and we generate config and we generate environment. Uh, these two commands will generate the environment, uh, browser sys, and current configuration files. 
I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, in version 15, we also changed a little bit how uh, the Angular CLI determines how which ECMO version is outputted. Previously, the target option, the type of configuration file was used. Uh, this sometimes resulted in consistencies as this doesn't have an effect on library code. Which could, which could end up in resulting in using unsupported EGMA features in your application. And a short uh, screenshot from can I use browser to implement support for various EGMA features uh, gradually. Uh, so previously the developers could not use uh, new features until all browsers support it. Now users can use all the new shiny EGMA features and the CLI will download it download in uh, the features that are missing uh, in the browser uh, based on your browser configuration file. So to add support for a new browser, uh, you just need to amend your browser configuration file. Okay, and since we're talking about simplification and reducing the learning curve, I bet you all were also thinking about standalone. How many of you are familiar with standalone? Awesome, so I see probably almost half of the room, maybe a bit less. Um, but basically our team thought very deeply about what are some of the concepts that we, uh, we can reduce at least from the early learning journey. And um, making ND modules optional was something that made a lot of sense as part of this journey, not introducing some of these more advanced concepts to um, beginner or developers that are just starting their Angular journey. They could be advanced uh, developers, but definitely new to Angular. Um, so we worked on um, implementing standalone components, directives, and pipes. And getting started with Angular using these new uh, concepts is as simple as writing your component and directly bootstrapping the application using that component that you created. And you can see that this requires a lot less concepts to dive into um, from the beginning. And you can see even like the surface of just the, the amount of code that you have to write for this very simple example is, um, it's really compelling to think about standalone. Um, another side effect of kind of implementing uh, standalone is that components are now really the smallest unit of reuse and you can directly lazy load your component as opposed to lazy loading an ng module. Um, and this simplifies cases like the router config a lot where you can see here that we're directly lazy loading the dog view component um, in our router config. And actually rewriting some of the router APIs to add support for standalone, it actually enabled us to shave off 11% of the router bundle, which uh, is definitely a, a win for us. And to be clear, the goal is not to remove ng modules, but rather to enable a getting started experience that doesn't necessarily require folks to learn about ng modules immediately. Uh, we made sure that standalone works well with ng module based applications and that you can easily import ng modules in your standalone applications and in your standalone components, directives, and pipes. And you might be wondering, for those of you that are familiar, um, you might be wondering, well, what are the next steps uh, in this journey? Because we, we recognize that only shipping this feature is not enough. We need to make sure that we provide um, all of the wonderful developer experience that you currently get while using ng modules. So one of the things that we're currently working on is adding support for um, running ng new dash dash standalone. That's just one example. We don't know if that's how it's going to look like, but basically generating a new project that is fully standalone using the Angular CLI. That's some of the work that we have in progress, as well as standalone migration schematics. Um, that's something as you're considering um, whether you should adopt standalone or not um, and what that means for your projects. Um, keep in mind that we're gonna build some of these schematics that will help you migrate automatically in some of the simplest use cases. Obviously, you might have to do some manual work 
uh, in order for us to preserve correctness in these tools that we're uh, building. And the other thing that we're really interested, and I'm looking at Thomas, but I know that there's others in the audience that are maintaining libraries, uh, we would love to bring the ecosystem in a place where there is like parity or feature complete uh, support for a standalone. So if you're maintaining any library that doesn't have support for standalone, please consider adding that support so that folks have this great experience as they're building applications with uh, standalone APIs. So simplifying the learning experience was awesome um, and doing that with standalone was great, but also it allows us to uh, ship features that weren't possible before. Uh, for example, let's take this scenario where you have two directives that should always be used together. Uh, how do you ensure that they are actually used together? What would you do in this case? So kind of thinking we have the tooltip, we have the menu, and we want to have a new directive that always displays a menu and the tooltip. How would you approach this today? Module, okay. Well, one way in which you would do that, you would attempt to extend from the two directives, which won't work because TypeScript only allows you to extend one class at a time, right? So you would get an error here. That's not an option. Uh, the other option would be to always remember to set the CDK tooltip and the CDK menu attributes anytime you're using menu with tooltip, but that's gonna be error prone, right? We might forget whenever we have to update, we might want to add new features like event tracking or touch gestures. Then you would have to remember all the places in which this directive is used and then go manually update that, uh, which definitely is not a great experience. And if you're feeling adventurous, you might consider using uh, TypeScript mix and functions, uh, which allow you to inherit from multiple classes, but they require a lot of boilerplate and they actually don't support all of the Angular features like uh, host bindings and dependency injection. So to resolve these issues, we actually introduced the new directive composition API in Angular v15, and this is enabled by standalone. How many of you have experimented with the Directive Composition API. Okay, just a few hands. That's awesome, that means that all of you have this opportunity to learn <laughs> about this new awesome thing that you can do in, uh, in Angular and that hopefully will make you a lot faster in your uh, development. Uh, so with the new Directive Composition API, you can rewrite the previous example by adding the host directive property here which tells uh, Angular that you want to, uh, whenever a uh, menu with tooltip is created, then the CDK tooltip and the CDK menu directives will also be applied to this directive automatically, which is awesome. Um, and you also have control over what properties do you actually want to expose as you're using this directive. So there's just a quick overview of the features of the new composition API. Uh, there's no limits to as many directives um, as you would want to use. Um, by default, inputs and outputs are hidden. Um, as a developer, you decide which ones you actually want to expose on the um, host directive. All of the Angular features are uh, supported that you might want to use. In terms of execution order, the host directives execute before their actual host. Um, so you can um, override the defaults if you wanted to. Uh, com compose directives can be changed, so host directives with host directives of their own. <laughs> it's host directives all the way down. <laughs> and uh, host and host directives can inject each other, but not both at the same time. Obviously, we need to have some sort of checks in place as well to make sure that the behavior is consistent with the rest of the framework. Um, so this, this feature is available for standalone directives only, but your components don't have to be standalone. Um, and components cannot be used as host directives, actually. Um, and you get only um, one uh, directive instance per element. If you wanna learn more, uh, Jeremy has an excellent video on YouTube. Um, we do have an Angular YouTube channel if you haven't 
subscribe to it, or if you haven't seen it yet, uh, there's a lot of content that the Angular team publishes there, so I highly encourage you to um, look at that. And finally, there's a couple things that are really important uh, that the team is exploring um, over this year. We're looking at how we can continue to improve our documentation. Um, this is a theme that you've probably heard the team working through over the past year. We continue to do that work by focusing on the initial learning journey, um, improving the usability of the docs, and uh, bringing even more consistency of presentation to the topics that we present. Uh, we are also exploring improvements uh, that we can make to SSR and SSD. Some of the areas that we are looking into are improving the documentation, on the structured hydration, standalone support, ESM support, and performance improvements in the web server and the overall build pipeline. And this gentleman right here is actually working on a lot of these yes. uh, changes. <laughs> and finally, we're also exploring a reactivity and uh, kind of thinking through can we have per component change detection uh, as opposed to global top-down change detection? Can we make zone.js optional? Um, and can we add features like computed properties? Um, we know a lot of you love those as well. But most importantly, we are exploring all of these topics with the priority of evolving Angular while maintaining platform stability and bringing everyone along. And also maintaining the properties of a, an opinionated framework that includes the knobs so that developers can use the framework in a way that it fits their needs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know we're a bit behind time, so I don't know if we have time for